Hello and welcome. Just a quick content warning. I'm going to be referencing murder and true crime, but since this isn't a true crime channel, I won't go into too much detail. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about the real Charles Sobrage, I've linked a documentary in the description. And I also read a book by Thomas Thompson called Serpentine, which is a pretty good read. And this gives a true account of the case. And it goes back into Charles Sobrage's childhood and Marie Andrea's life before she met him. We also get more details about the victims. I will say that this book is really, really long, but it does fill in some of the gaps. Also note that this book was published in 1979, and as we know, so much more happens after that. Anyway, if you enjoy videos about TV shows, movies, books, and other pop culture items, please feel free to like and or subscribe. The Serpent is originally a BBC iPlayer show, and it was the most watched show since Normal People, and it was streamed by 31 million people. It's currently streaming on Netflix, though, which is where I watched it. So the TV show is based on the real-life case of Conman man murderer from the 1970s, Charles Sobrage, who went by the alias Alain Gautier, and his wife Marie-André, who went by Monique. I'm just going to use their real names though. Charles and Marie were a pair of murderous fraudsters and thieves who made their money by robbing unsuspecting tourists of their passports, cash, and traveler's checks. A lot of their victims were traveling through what was known as the Hippie Trail. This was the name of the journey that hippies took in the mid-1950s to the late 1970s between Europe and South Asia, mainly through Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India and Nepal. A lot of this also took place in Bangkok as well. The Hippie Trail was a form of alternative tourism and one of the aims obviously was to be able to travel as cheaply and for as long as possible. So their victims were particularly vulnerable, people looking to find themselves who were sometimes rather lonely and also people who were open to new experiences, friends, parties, drugs and love. It seemed quite easy then for Charles as a sophisticated French man to befriend them and it was also easy for him to write off the missing travellers because local police weren't overly concerned with getting involved in what they believed to be young people just going off the grid and partying. Charles was also very friendly with the local police so a lot of money exchanged hands for them to look another way. So these factors coupled with the fact that he was supposedly a charming psychopath made this kind of the perfect hunting ground for him. So a bit about Charles, he was very preoccupied with having people follow him and admire him. So he seemed to be kind of a narcissist, but at the same time, he also had kind of an inferiority complex, I guess. Being half Vietnamese and half French, he struggled for social acceptance, being a darker skinned French man when he lived in France. And this wasn't his only issue. In his childhood, he was rather shuffled between his father in Vietnam, who didn't actually want to claim him at first, and his mother, who had since moved to France with a new husband, who didn't quite know what to do with him because he was showing signs of delinquency early on. Due to some shoddy administrative practices as well, at the time of his birth, he also didn't really seem to belong anywhere officially for a long time. So he spent a lot of his childhood yearning for his father's acceptance, resenting his mother, but still desperate to prove himself to her. And also resenting his stepfather who didn't want Charles to take his last name. Obviously, Charles saw the difference in treatment between himself and his step-siblings as well. Later on, one of his main accomplices, Ajay, also has this issue of struggling to be accepted, and Charles quite effectively exploits that. He also uses this to gain trust of one of his victims, so he feels this need, on the one hand, to prove that he's worthy, but he also already feels entitled to it, the admiration and loyalty of people around him. And that's one of the driving forces, along with his greed. In the book, it's pointed out as well that he develops the skills of being able to get others to follow him at an early age. And he's really smart, perceptive and good at getting away with a lot more petty crime than he should. So when I was watching the show, I obviously knew about Charles, so I found him more try-hard, pushy, and too friendly. But I can imagine if you're a hippie type in the 70s, the whole vibe is traveling and making friends. It still is. So I can see why they fell in with him. Also, if you look at the two of them, Charles and marie Andre, they're a really striking pair. You just wouldn't expect these two to steal your money. They might try to sell you some shady gemstones and get you to be a gemstone mule, but they often treated their guests to dinners and opened their homes to tourists. So it never seemed immediately suspicious, but these are also really practiced con people. So this is what they do. 
So they had a couple of methods, but usually they would befriend these young travelers, invite them to their home, buy them dinner or offer to take them around the city. Then they drug their victims, either by roofing them or by giving them medication, which was supposedly to avoid getting dysentery. But the medication itself would then make the tourists sick. With these travelers sick and unable to fend for themselves, that's when Charles would steal their passports and their belongings. In the show, there was one really stressful storyline, for example, about a young French guy named Dominique who is kind of shy and looks a bit lonely. Charles targets him and for a while we witness poor Dominique taking the medicine from Charles and marie Andre, only to keep getting sicker. And yeah, he's trapped there. Charles does say that he'll drug him just enough to keep him there and so Dominique does become Charles's kind of errand boy. Dominique is quite impressionable for a long time. Like We see him even take this poison slash medicine himself when Charles is away so he believes that this medicine is going to make him better even though he's not quite getting better. Eventually he starts to see a lot of sick people around the house and other tourists who mysteriously disappear after Charles and Andre take them on drives and one day he's taking his medication and Charles pet monkey ends up spilling it and drinking it and the monkey dies shortly thereafter which then confirms his suspicions. Obviously the stakes are raised now that he knows because he also needs to keep his demeanor the same. He can't show that anything has changed. So Charles is really good at relieving people of their passports and Dominique eventually reaches out to a French couple who are neighbors named Remy and Nadine. They help him get his passport back and they doctor it so that it's his again. You see, Charles had already stuck his photo in there and I guess in the 70s, passport fraud was way easier. Eventually, Dominique does escape though and this is one of the best storylines on the show. So Marie Andrea was also an interesting case to me. You know, we never judge victims of abusers who choose to stay and she was obviously being psychologically and physically abused by Charles. She was terrified of leaving but she also actively participated in either administering the poison to their victims or she played the honeypot to entrap them. She also watched the victims being dragged away knowing that they would never be seen again and she did nothing. Her conscience does catch up with her often but throughout it all it's not enough to make her take any action. I couldn't tell whether she was pure staying out of fear or if there was a part of her that wanted to be entangled in this life with him. At one point in the show she kind of blames him for what he turned her into or what he made her do and he just says well she knew the score from the beginning and she also enjoyed the spoils of their life of crime and sure she did enjoy the lifestyle but I never got the sense from the book or the show though that this was the big motivator. To me she just had an extremely unhealthy infatuation with Charles and was willing to do anything for him to please him. Had he asked her to perpetrate the murders or help dispose of the bodies I'm certain that she would have been by his side doing that as well so she's just as much of a villain and a criminal as he is. In her diary she does write about Monique as the one with the cool exterior and Marie Andre as the one being scared but from what I could tell it didn't look like she was completely disassociating because you could often just see cracks in her performance as Monique. I don't think the two were as separate as she would have liked to believe even. By the way Charles did have a lot of power over over women as well. He had many lovers and one of the reasons why he had to keep robbing as well is because he needed to keep them all happy and as a man of expensive tastes this got expensive as well. He also lost a lot of money gambling so their fortunes and living conditions were always going from five star to struggling and back again. The grift, the murders, the robberies, it would have never ended. So one of the standouts and one of the heroes of the real story and of the show is definitely the character of Herman Knippenberg, a young diplomat of the Embassy of the Netherlands. He starts by investigating the disappearance of a young Dutch couple and then the story of the other missing tourists starts to unravel. He gets help from his wife Angela and the French couple Remy and Nadine but he's the only one who simply cannot let this go even though he runs into roadblocks at every turn pretty much. Everyone in the diplomatic community wants him to drop this. The local police are dragging their feet so he has to put the pieces all together on his own. Sadly it's at the cost of his mental health at least for a little while and obviously 
it starts affecting his marriage. Interestingly, the actor, Billy Howell, who plays Hermon, is English and he learned Dutch and worked with a dialect coach to perfect his Dutch-English accent for the role. I also personally really enjoy the scenes with Charles' mother. At one point, Charles takes Marie to meet her in Paris, but because Charles quickly realizes that he has no control in the situation and his mother is exposing some of his vulnerabilities, he makes them leave. But Marie does go back behind Charles' back and his mother warns her about the kind of man that he is, even though Marie already knows. The mother also has no qualms about not protecting her son from law enforcement. So Marie gets pretty disillusioned about her life with Charles later on. But yeah, I guess live by the sword, die by the sword. And when she does bring this up with Charles, he hurts her. So she does end up staying because she doesn't have any money and she feels she has no choice. Anyway, after a lot of running from the cops and having Interpol on their trail, they're caught and sent to prison. Eventually, Marie Andre does provide a 30 page statement detailing her life and all of their crimes. And that does help put him away. I should mention that Hermann is instrumental in putting Charles behind bars as well. I'm going to be honest, I couldn't keep track of all the times that he was incarcerated and he broke out because there were just so many. But the show tells us that as of 2020, Charles is still in prison in Kathmandu and Marie passed away from ovarian cancer in the 70s. One thing about Charles is that he does not like acknowledging his crimes. So basically he killed people because he got what he needed from them and he disposed of them. It wasn't as though this is what he was particularly seeking out, even though no doubt it made him feel powerful and in control. And the way he pressures Andre into doing it, there is something vaguely cultish or ritualistic about it. I read this interesting GQ article where the writer Andrew Anthony gets to talk to Charles and at one point Charles tells him about the possibility of someone ghostwriting his autobiography, which would be a bestseller. When Andrew asked Charles if he'd be prepared to discuss the murders in this bestseller, Charles just says, I don't think we need to get into all that. You know, as though these are just irritating inconveniences or footnotes. So he absolutely distances himself from what he did and I read a bit about why serial killers do this in a paper called Denying the Darkness, Exploring the Discourses of Neutralization of Bundy, Gacy and Dharma. And basically it says, despite their true identity of serial killer being exposed due to arrest, trial and conviction, these killers still accounted for their crimes using neutralizations in an attempt to retain control over the narrative and maintain morally decent selves. Researchers found that despite being arrested and convicted of violent crimes, offenders still attempted to present morally decent selves. By using these techniques, these murderers are able to neutralize deviance in the past for the sake of non-deviant self-presentation today. And by offering these neutralizations, these offenders attempt to make themselves and their behaviors more tolerable, which is particularly the case when using denial of the victim. They can mitigate responsibility for their actions, maintain their positive representation of self and minimize the stigma of being a multiple murderer, which was very much the case for Charles Sobrage. Anyway, if you're into true crime, culty things, and in general, if you're looking for your next show to binge, I'd highly recommend this. It's a pretty stressful watching experience, but it's a really good show. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.